I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to get a banana pup off of a banana tree. I've got one growing in the back here just for that purpose. And as you can see, I've got one growing here. It's growing actually up against a mulberry tree. And that one I could probably separate off too. You know, this is a high risk, really, pup. And it's simply a high risk pup because it's so interwoven with this mulberry. I almost don't want to hurt the mulberry. It's almost formed a symbiotic relationship with this thing at this point, but let's see if we can separate that because this banana tree can't can't uh, go on here, of course, because the, the fronds are just going to overgrow everything and uh, it's going to grow ultimately up into these power lines because these things get about 15, 20 feet tall. So let's go ahead and first remove this one and then I'll show you what removing one from an actual banana tree looks like. Now the only thing you're going to need for this job is a shovel. Now if you're worried about you know, diseases and that kind of thing, you could always clean the shovel. Of course, I'm not worried. I know I'm using a variety that's fairly, fairly pest resistant. Oh, hello little hens. These little hens will keep me company as I separate pup from banana tree, right? Trying to be as gentle as possible. <laughs> not to damage this thing, but Well, the tree's got to come with it. Hey, hey, Sally. Fortunately, I don't think the mulberry tree minds it much. I'm really trying to take it easy. Just, uh, yeah, I like to take a little bit of that root with it. You can see some of those little baby roots are going to be helpful. All right, that's a pretty good cutting. I think I'll leave this little piece in there and see if it'll sprout again. Because that sprouts another pup, I'll harvest that one too. I don't mind having these spots that are kind of like pup production areas. That's what that cutting looks like. I think there's enough of the base left in roots that it'll grow. That's when we're gonna have to get into the ground pretty quickly. And what I do here is I bury them about, uh, probably about up to here. You can bury them deeper than you know their old level, but I bury probably about up to here and then keep it watered. And I'd say out of the 10 banana transplants I do, probably one might die from the experience. You know, there's certainly ways to increase your odds. You could put it directly in a five gallon bucket of water to make sure it stays well hydrated during the transition. That'd be worth doing, especially if it's super hot where you're at. Here's another one though. Look at this. This one is, well, in a dangerous position, but I think I can tolerate it, I think. But I plan on capturing every pup. I've already gotten two pups off of this thing and it's got a pretty decent size one. I probably shouldn't have let it grow that long but let's go ahead and harvest this thing and you can see this thing is kind of wedged in between my son's kayak who, who is off to college but i think we can get it in there yeah 
key thing is to not bang away at the connection. You want to try to get a clean cut if possible. And I try to let a little bit of the cracking action of the tree itself do the work, but try to do just one cut. Whew. Nearly knocked it off the camera. Okay, and you can see I'm not rushing this job. Yeah, and I feel the resistance there. I can tell it's mostly free. I can tell it's mostly free on the back side here. So now I'll take this out. I push it forward to be able to see where that shovel mark was because I don't want to go back in in a different place. Again, I just think you want to minimize the trauma to the, the mother plant as much as possible. Um, in there with more cuts. Try to separate it by using the wedge, just wedging that away. And then I can feel it kind of pulled away. I don't want to go chopping at the roots either. And that's because I want them to be able to work again. And if I damage them, I, I reduce that. So you can see it's now separated. There's a nice space. You can see where it was attached to the mother plant. And hopefully I'll leave a little bit of that root structure in place so that it can shoot up another pup. Because again, that's the whole purpose of this clump. So, let's see if I can. All right, let's see if I can just pull it up gently. Yep, you hear that? There you go. There we go. Okay, got a lot of the roots. Pleased by that. This is a good cutting. Let's take a look at this thing. Yeah, real good cutting. Plenty of healthy leaves, none of them damaged in the process. Lots of roots. And we got it in a way where we didn't damage the pup much. So I'm really stoked about that. That went about as well as a banana transplant could go. And it was in the video. Wow. Look at this little girl. I'll get bananas off this, but we've been stressing it, certainly, by taking so many pups off of it. Yeah, the hens get excited anytime they sense that I'm breaking the soil. You get access to those bugs. Fresh supply of, blood, of bugs and worms. They'll probably be pecking around the base of this thing and fertilizing it at the same time. So now it's just a matter of figuring out where to plant those pups. 